You're listening to The Parenting Space, a podcast brought to you by parents and practitioners from the South London and Maudsley NHS Foundation Trust, a podcast where you can hear us discuss and debate issues around parenting and mental well-being. Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Parenting Space. Today I'm joined by the lovely Bridget, who has joined us to talk about the topic of rewards. Bridget, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Bridget. Um, I'm the mum of three girls, three daughters who are now 21, 19 and 14. Thank you so much. And I know we had a little bit of a chat just briefly before about what you think would be helpful to talk about in this um, episode today. And you mentioned the topic of rewards. And I just wanted to find out a bit more about what what drew you to that topic. Well, I think um, when I've been a facilitator for parent groups in the past and even thinking back on my own experiences as a parent, Mm -hmm. we think we know what rewards are. We think it's really simple and straightforward. But actually, when I bring up the topic of rewards in groups that that I've been running, lots of parents say, I've tried rewards and it doesn't work. And then when you unpick a little bit what they've tried and what hasn't worked, it's really clear that that the process has got a bit muddled and that's why it hasn't worked very well. Mm. Um, So it's one of those things that seems really, really simple, but actually I think it's really complicated and needs quite a bit more thought than just maybe popping a sticker on a chart and, and it being a kind of quick and easy job done. So... I've found for myself, if you do put that thought in and kind of go through the process of really thinking about what you're using the reward for and how you're going to do it, you're much more likely to have a a successful experience with it. It would be lovely to hear a bit more about what you feel is the fundamentals of rewards and and what are the key things that are helpful when you have um, rewards for your children. I think it really is starting going right back to basics and thinking, what am I trying to achieve here? or What would I like to change about the behaviour maybe that I'm seeing um, or that's happening in my house? And there's something that I'd like to be different about that. And I think when we think about those things, we often think at quite a high level. So, for example, people will say something like, well, I'd just like them to sit nicely at the table at dinner time. But actually, what does that mean? Mm. So being really specific about what that means, perhaps it means sitting on their chair, using cutlery, depending on their age, um, being able to, to to eat their food independently. I mean, there could be lots of different things. But once you've identified what those things are, just picking one Mm -hmm. of those things and starting with that. So rather than having a reward goal that sit nicely at the table, maybe your reward goal is um, you're going to sit on your chair for for five minutes, for, you know, to start with five minutes, 10 minutes, or you're going to use your knife and fork to eat your food. You know, you're going to chat. I mean, it could be anything. Because people have very different behaviour expectations and that's fine. I don't think there's a right or wrong, but it's thinking about what you would like to see, what you would like to be different and starting from there. So that's like the real fundamental is kind of set the goal and put it in really clear and simple language. Um, It's also really, really important to involve your child in this, getting your child's buy-in. And I think not just about the behaviour, but about the reward. Because if you find out from your child what they'd really like, then you can tailor your reward to something that that's worthwhile for them to make that little bit of an effort to achieve. And it can be anything. It doesn't have to be an expensive thing. It doesn't have to be money. It can be money, but it doesn't have to be money. It doesn't have to be something you buy. It can be just a sticker. It can be sometimes lots of families come back and say what really worked was giving their children choice about something. So putting them in charge and choose the movie for family movie night or they choose what to have for tea on a particular day of the week. So giving them that little bit of um, of being in control and being the boss is is really popular. Um, but every child's different. So it really is about thinking what works for your child and what works for your family. I really um, liked the fact that you said just focus on the one thing um, that they can tackle. And then once you've got that, it sounds like then you can move on to the next thing. Is that is that right? 
Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Nail one thing and that gives you a basis to move on. And it's also really helpful as well because you can really see progress happening if you focus on one thing at a time. If you're focusing on maybe five or six things and nothing's moving along very fast, it's really dispiriting and and you feel that you're not getting anywhere. So if you're able to think, oh, right, we've nailed sitting on the chair, now we can move on to using cutlery. What are some of the ways that parents can keep track of progress? I know we hear a lot about reward charts. Um, Is that something that you would recommend? Yeah, I think charts can be really useful um, with younger children and with older children as well, because it's a really simple way of keeping track of progress. And you can pop the chart next to the place where the 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 behavior is going to take place so maybe it's a toothbrushing one you can have a chart up in the bathroom if it's related to meal times you can have it on the fridge so it's really helpful and flexible like that um some people like to pop a sticker on the chart and i've seen some really amazing charts where parents have got their kids to help design them and they've really got them involved and they've got elaborate themes of what the children enjoy sometimes related to the behavior but sometimes just like they're really into Paw Patrol so they've made this amazing Paw Patrol theme chart reward chart and they put Paw Patrol stickers on it and that's really motivating for the child because they, they they love it so much and it's theirs but other parents use really simple ways so I've seen you know quite common to have like an empty jar and you're popping a piece of pasta into the jar every time you see the behavior and when the jar's full that's when the the reward comes. So it's a really visual way of tracking progress. The jar fills up. And I've heard lots of feedback from parents about, you know, oh, don't get a really big jar, <laughs> you know. So so it, it, it's really easy to customise depending on how often that behaviour is happening. So if you've got something that's maybe happening multiple times a day, you might have quite a big jar and quite a small thing that you're putting in. If it's a behaviour that maybe doesn't happen so often, quite a small jar and quite a big thing you're putting in, like cotton wool balls or marshmallows, you know, quite something quite bulky. It's really easy to customise it to suit and then I think you know older children just points rather than stickers so Mm -hmm. just keeping track of points and one thing tip that a parent of boys in fact it was gave me I don't not sure if my girls would be that bothered but she said her boys they loved big numbers so instead of giving one point for a baby she would give like 50 points or 500 points or a thousand points said you know it sounds amazing it doesn't matter if you've got to get a hundred thousand points to get the reward but you're giving them in like ten thousand increments but it made her kids feel really good and they really liked that so it's just being a bit creative and having a bit of fun with it It doesn't have to be something that is a real chore Mm -hmm. so making it fun for both parent and the child um to to look forward to I know we spoke about money being um, a form of a reward um, and just wanted to um, know kind of your thoughts on that. Um, I know you said that you can use money or you don't have to use money. Just kind of what are your thoughts on on um, using money as a reward and has it worked for you and, and just a bit more about that? Yeah, it's definitely worked for me, um, particularly with older children. Yeah. I think with younger children, Money, especially now when it's on bank accounts and cards and it's not very tangible Mm -hmm. and it and in itself is not very meaningful. It's it's what the money can buy that's meaningful. So with younger children, when my children were younger, I tended to go for things that I knew they wanted or that they valued. And, And it could be a sticker. It could be something really tiny. Um, I remember a parent at a group that I ran saying that they got a Lego set and divided it up, you know, the little bags that come inside with the Lego pieces and they used a piece at a time to, or a little bag at a time as the reward. And then at the end of it, the child had built the whole model. So that was really rewarding in itself. It had lots of aspects that were really lovely to it. So it can be something that that your child values. my advice would always be to keep it small. And if you're going for money with an older child, keep it to relatively small amounts and be really wary of setting yourself up in a kind of complicated reward structure where things start to get multiplied because Mm -hmm. it can get really, really expensive really quickly. And 
absolutely key to all this working is you have to stick to what you've said. Mm -hmm. So if you've told your child that you're going to give them five pounds every time they do something without an end to it, you might find that all of a sudden they're doing that every day, three times a day. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And when you go back on it, so when you're setting it up, set it up really carefully. How long is it? How long are you going to do this for? How many times are you going to reward that behavior Mm -hmm. before your, your, you know, it becomes a habit, it Mm -hmm. comes something that that is being achieved and you can move on to maybe the next thing or you don't necessarily need to move on, but definitely have an end point so you don't leave yourself vulnerable to something that you really didn't think you were going to have to do. Absolutely. And as you were, as you were speaking, one of the um, images that came to my head, um, I don't know if there are any Harry Potter fans out there, but I just saw um, when Dudley had the presents and he said, but last year you got me 27 <laughs> presents. <laughs> and I feel like that's definitely, um, that can be the trap that we get ourselves caught into. So I guess let's then think about some of the challenges of of rewards. Um, I know you've just mentioned it there in terms of if you do use money, think about it carefully, otherwise it could um, go the other way. Um, But yeah, and um, are there any more challenges that we haven't spoke about? I think one of the biggest challenges is actually picking a behaviour that's that's achievable. Mm -hmm. When you're thinking about what you'd like to change in your child's behaviour, which is really the point of the reward is getting it just right Mm -hmm. so it's something that that maybe you're not seeing but you think that your child is capable of doing or they can maybe only do rarely and you'd like them to do more of that behavior so hitting that sweet spot where you've set a goal that's achievable because really with rewards it is about setting yourself up and your child up to succeed Mm. it's not about setting yourselves up to fail so that's why it's so important the reward is something that you're prepared and and willing to give Mm -hmm. because you have to want them to have it so if it's something that you're not gonna give out then you just have to pick something else right Um, so I think that can be a real challenge thinking about how you choose a behavior and you get better at it definitely the more you think about what's happening what's going on for your child and really thinking about the reasons behind that behavior so I think my experience when I was really bad at doing rewards when I was a parent who thought rewards didn't work was was because my child wasn't able to change the behavior that I wanted to change and and the particular child I'm thinking of um, has diagnoses of ADHD and ASD now, but we didn't know that at the time. time. Okay. So, so there were things that we would wanted to her to be able to do differently, but actually she just wasn't capable of that. And and what we learned was no amount of rewarding and incentivizing and and other strategies worked when it was something that she really wasn't able to do. That would be my my thing to consider. You have to be a little bit of a detective mm. when you're looking at the behaviour and think actually what's going on here behind it. Is there a reason, a really valid reason why this isn't happening for my child, even if it's happening for other children, maybe of a similar age? Um, I notice their classmates are able to do this. So when you're you're picking that reward, you're picking something that is something that they can do. You shared some amazing things and things that parents can take away from this um, today. Uh, But I wondered if there was, speaking of the one thing, if there was one thing that you would uh, give as a a piece of advice for um, anybody listening listening to this, um, what would that be? I think it's actually just do what's right for you Mm -hmm. and what's right for your child when you're thinking about how to set it up. Be be specific, like I said, and think about one thing that you'd like to change, but but put yourselves right at the centre of it and and think about what works for you and just do that. Thank you so much, Bridget. It's been lovely speaking um, with you and lovely to have you here today. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. And we look forward to... Um, having you all here on the parenting space again.
on our next episode. You've been listening to The Parenting Space, a podcast brought to you by the CAMS team at South London and Maudsley NHS Foundation Trust. If you need support after today's discussion in the podcast, please talk to someone that you trust or follow the links in the description to get general advice and support. The Parenting Space is available on all podcast platforms. If you'd like to hear more discussions like this, subscribe to our channel and you'll receive a notification every time we release a new episode. If you've enjoyed listening to this episode, let us know your thoughts over on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. You can find us at the Parenting Space underscore official. <laughs>